So, first of all, this video was supposed to be up last night, but my neighbors want to have a party, stomp around, yell, and you could hear them in the background. So, obviously, I couldn't post that. Um, I'm re-recording it now, but if you have bad neighbors, let me know in the comments below the worst experience you ever had with a neighbor. I used to have a neighbor that said she was a Wiccan. Straight up Wiccan. Old lady, Wiccan. Weird. Um, yeah. Either way, we are starting with Doom Patrol Volume 1 of Gerard Way's run, brick by brick. All of the info is going to be in the description. Let me know how you guys feel about this, and let me know how you guys feel about Season 3 coming up, because I'm excited. Her name is Casey Brink, and she only wants to do good things. When she was a little girl, her mother told her, be a bright star in a black hole just before she flew into the sun. So, Casey stays bright. She stays white hot. Currently, Casey is daydreaming about race car drivers, crashed ambulances, and bombs dropping over Granada, amongst other things, which really isn't the most responsible thing to be doing right now. Because Casey is driving. With the snap, she shakes back to reality just to realize that she is currently transporting an ailing man to the hospital. When she arrives, she and her partner unload the patient and hand him over to the medical staff. The nurse on staff thanks both Casey and her partner for their speedy service, wondering aloud how they can get from point A to point B so quickly in that old ambulance of theirs. That thing handles like a boogie board. After a job well done, Casey and her partner hit an arcade and grab a bite to eat from a food truck serving gyros. Casey is new to the unit, but she's been doing this as long as she can remember, which she thinks is a very long time. She can't tell. She's tired, but not jaded. She's got a toothache, but she's still smiling. And Casey is currently liberating planets one angry sprite at a time. Sometimes she sees things on the job that makes her want to put her brain through a car wash, but she'll still hold your hand. In the ambulance, she's everything. In the ambulance, she's home. And every second behind the wheel stands in the way of the five words she hates saying. We tried everything we could. Casey's partner, Sam, is a nice guy. He tells Casey that they have been working together for about three weeks now. So, it's about time she meets his son, Lucius. He's weird, like her. I'm weird? Casey asks, looking up from the video game. Sam takes a bite from his euro. Oh yeah, you're weird. Coming in here, driving like that, spinning all kinds of crazy nonsense like that story you told me about your high school prom. We were attacked by Fanta Hawks, Casey reminds him. And my date turned into a pool of lavender membranes. Exactly what I'm talking about right there. It's cool though. My son is cool. He's really into heavy metal. Loves skateboarding. Just a little out there for some people. But I'm all he's got. His mother joined a cult about four years ago. Sam begins to feel strange and examines his food before continuing. You don't know what's going on inside of someone, really. There's a hidden universe in there, full of secret stars. Look at this euro, a beautiful, colorful, multi-layered spiral. It's got tzatziki, it's got fresh vegetables, 
It's got texture and man's influence on nature and society. We think we know this euro, but we don't know everything. What's going on in there? Endless possibilities? Good versus evil? Just a whole world buzzing along, going about its daily rotation. Time might make no sense when you're living on a euro. Then, you put the universe inside of you, you feel me? Maybe we're all inside someone else's euro, Casey remarks. Could be, Sam answers before standing up and throwing the food into the garbage. Could be nothing at all. But, what if there was something on that euro? What if there was a civilization sitting strangely on a chunk of meat hidden within the meal? And what if the aroma from the euro attracted insects and they landed on the food? What would the people of that small civilization think if they were to lay eyes on a creature so large, at least? from their perspective. Undoubtedly, the sight of such a monster would cause panic amongst the people of the civilization. The protectors would gather up their rifles and weapons and prepare to take out the beast. The civilians would devolve into panic. Let's add another layer. There could be a small resistance army preparing to strike the civilization at the exact same time. And one more layer after that. Cliff Steele, the robot man, is part of that resistance. Robot Man fights his way through the soldiers until he arrives at a missile silo within a military outpost. He's over this whole experience. It's all been just a bunch of crap, and he has no problem sending every creature on that euro to hell. Robot Man hammers down on the detonator, and immediately all the missiles explode and send Robot Man flying off of the euro, out of the trash, and into the air. There's quite a bit of collateral damage. Casey and Sam are speechless. Elsewhere, a disheveled man in a dirty Hawaiian shirt, an overcoat, visor, and flip-flops drags his feet through an empty warehouse. Danny? He asks as he kneels over and picks up a brick. Is that you? Is that you? The man holds up the brick in the air and inspects it. Nope. He tosses the brick over his shoulder into a pile of the other bricks he's already looked at. Give me a sign, Danny. Give me a sign. Just come out and let me know you're okay. We can go back, Danny. The man cries out before falling to his knees. The sound of his own echo frightens him. Who's that? Who's out there? He barks out. Leave me alone. Now, let's ask ourselves, what's going on with Niles Calder? At the moment, he seems to be minding his own business sitting in his wheelchair within the park. In front of him, a keyboard, a smaller keyboard, and a synthesizer. He presses down on one of the white piano keys. The tone is off. He removes and replugs a couple of wires and retries. This time, the sound produced almost sounds like a buzz, similar to the sound a fly would make. Now, what would he do with that? Anything, really. 
Work is never over for Casey and Sam. They receive a dispatch instructing them that a pedestrian was involved in a hit and run. But when the two arrive, no one is to be found. Even more curious, when Casey makes a call back to dispatch for an update, she is greeted by a voice neither her or Sam recognize. The new dispatcher calls themselves M. All right, M, Sam responds. We are at 698 West Ricardo Boulevard and we see no sign of an accident. No victim, no blood, no cops. No one's here. At that moment, Robot Man appears. He landed elsewhere and stumbled his way through the alleyways until he arrived just across the street from Casey and Sam. Wait, Sam, what's that? Casey gasps. Some kind of wizard? Or, I don't know, what do you call that? It looks beat up. Shit, it sees us! It's coming right for us! Robot Man's body creaks as he steps one foot after the other. My head, he groans. He makes it halfway across the street, when, out of nowhere, a garbage truck barrels by, hitting Robot Man and shattering him into hundreds of pieces. And Casey and Sam are speechless. Strange enough, Casey's first instinct is to gather the pieces. The next day, at the Rondo Inn across town, there is a small business meeting going on within a conference room. The staff worker on duty fills the group's coffee cups and thanks them once again for choosing Rondo Inn for their next business solution. She hardly has time to finish her sentence before they push her out of the door. Once the coast is clear, everyone in the room starts either glowing or expanding, each revealing their true form. Umbra Calabra, they chant. The message is the meat. Tender cuts, fine and sweet. The businessmen that expanded comment that they hate meeting on Earth, and they hate the Rondo Inn. This better be some groundbreaking shit they're about to see. Soon after, one of the ones that glow begins their business pitch. Thank you for meeting us here. We wanted a private channel, free from the observant, security being the issue. We trust all goes well with the business on Gloam. You know how it goes, replies one of the expanded. That's why we're here. Get on with it. The one that glows continues. As you know, Goobfubers is introducing an all-new mentally healthy meat menu to all its locations. It's a really big campaign. There's a tie-in with a new film franchise involving Talking Fribs, voiced by Axtian Teenage Idols. A portion of proceeds goes to some virus research. Fuck Goob Foobers and fuck charitable proceeds, says one of the ones that expanded as they slam their fist on the table. People want flavor! People want to be the kind of disgusting they can afford. I'm disgusting, and I love it! That's what's happening. Well, that hasn't exactly been working out for your chain, Move Goobers. What if I told you we found a potentially unending, regenerating supply of stress-free meat? Basically, at no cost. Our agents have discovered the existence of a sentient organic generator sprawl. 
the sprawl is capable of creating and sustaining life due to some kind of spike in its energy factors. The plan is to locate, infiltrate, invade, and capture the source, then torture the sprawl into producing product. We even have a whole campaign worked out. We call it Danny Burgers. Elsewhere, Casey arrives home after her shift and places a box of Robot Man's body parts on the kitchen counter in her apartment. She had to make two trips. Her roommate started lecturing her after the first. Furthermore, he huffs, your perky quirky personality might have gotten you far in EMT school, but it has zero effect on me. In fact, I find your vigor for life highly irritating. And how are you late with the rent? I mean, they do pay you for saving junkies, right? While you're out there looking for money, get the trash to the curb, he says, pointing to the box of scraps. It isn't trash. It's a robot man. Of course it is. Because... You don't make any sense. At that moment, there's a knock at their door. Casey's roommate cracks the door open and pokes out his head. Christ, now who the hell is this? He asks as he's greeted by a strange woman in a sparkling red blazer, a domino mask, and tap shoes. Instantly, the woman starts dancing. Let me introduce myself. I'm really quite a pip. I've sailed across the universe on my intergalactic ship. I've heard it's your special day, so let's really make a stink. Salutations, I salute you. Happy birthday, Casey Brink. The woman throws her hands forward and Casey's roommate explodes. Pink cake filling splatters across every corner of the apartment, covering the counters, Casey, and her cat. But it's not my birthday, Casey mumbles. The woman in the mask laughs. Wow, what a mess. I've never had that happen before. Very interesting. She examines the room. Well, Looks like you need a new roommate. I... I mean... I guess... Casey sighs. I was just getting to know him. Did you like him? The woman asks. Not really. Cool! The woman walks past Casey and into the kitchen. Can I just take his bed? Um... I don't know. Don't you want to move your stuff in? All I have is this getup, but don't worry, I got money. I'm loaded. Who hired you? Casey asks. Nobody. I saw you on the subway and looked like you needed cheering up. Cool jacket, by the way. Then, Robot Man, whose head is laying on the kitchen counter, starts to speak. Nutrients. Tss, tss, tss. He says, behind a layer of static. Whoa, what is that? The woman gasps. Some kind of robot. He got hit by a garbage truck. Not as sturdy as he looks, but surprisingly lightweight. Cool, the woman says, grabbing a screwdriver. Let's pop him open and take a look. Is that a good idea? It is, and I'm full of them. Let's see what we have in here. The woman removes the skull piece, revealing Robot Man's brain. It's a boy, she says. We better get this brain some nutrients. <laughs> oh, and where are my manners? I'm Terry Nunn. The woman smiles, holding out her hand. Casey grabs it and shakes it before introducing herself as well. Casey Brink. Nice. To meet you. <laughs>